Okay, so uh, first let me ask you a question. Who here has never run into the sine and cosine functions? Never. Okay, all right. No, no previous knowledge is necessary. We're going to explain what the sine and cosine functions are. So here we have the traditional explanation. You have a a right triangle, and you know that from geometry that all right triangles that share not the right angle but another angle are similar. Anyone want to tell me in 20 words or less what similar triangles are? Remember? Similar triangle. Who took geometry more than 10 years now? Yes. Uh, same angles but different side lengths? Same angles. They could have the same size, but they don't have to, right? They could be, if they have the same size, we call them congruent. But you, you, you heard a different question that I you're right. If all the sides are the same, they are equal. But if you have two triangles and they are the same shape, meaning these are not congruent, they are similar, they have the same shape. So if I have two right triangles, oh, let me back up a step. What do you need to know, what's the minimum you need to know that two triangles are similar? Two sides. Two sides. Two sides. Well, they're triangles, they have three sides. 180 degrees. What's the minimum, minimum information would tell you that two triangles are similar? Two angles. Two angles, right? If you know, that angle one and angle two are the same, you know they're similar. And we remember why. Why do you know the third angle is the same? Oh, the, the, the total number of angles added up together must be 180 degrees. Excellent. We know the sum of the three angles is 180. So we know two are the same. Third has to be the same. You could do that algebraically. I could you know, give these all little a, little b, and little c, big A, big B, and big C, and A plus B plus C equals 180. Little a plus little b plus little c equals 180. And we know A is equal to little a. B is equal to little b. This and this are the same, right? So we subtract it. We don't know what c is, but we know it's my mile. I didn't do that very well, but I'm not going to make that real clear. Well, let's subtract both equations. These two are the same, so they're zero. This is, oh, that didn't work. Oh, yeah, because this is. All right, little c, big c. So big c minus little c is equal to zero. Uh, big c minus little c is equal to zero, then c, big c equals little c. Okay, that's an algebra. Okay, why am I harping on this? The right triangle, if you know one angle, one of the non, you know, not the right angle, then you know every right triangle with that angle is similar. In other words, once you give me, let's, let's take a number, 41 degrees. Once a right triangle has an angle that's 41 degrees, every triangle, every right triangle that has an angle that's 41 degrees is in the same shape. Now, that's step one. Step two, what do we know? What's the great thing about knowing that 
triangles are similar. Why is that important? I don't hear lengths of sides and ratios, yes? Yes, that would be. That's enough to make me know that you know the right answer, but say it again. Or you can determine the length of the side of each of the triangles. You know, if the length of the side is one of them, then there's going to be a direct ratio to the length of the side of one of them. Sure. Let's call this, now let's use my little letters again. All right? So side AB. over side big AB, that ratio is going to be equal to side AC over C is equal to side BC over BC. The ratio of the sides are similar. Well, that's going to be true of a right triangle. In particular, we want to look at two ratios. We want to look, all right, so here's my right triangle. Let me give you some vocabulary. Theta is the angle. O, that's the opposite side, all right? A is the adjacent side, and H, somebody tell me what H stands for. Who's Mark? Hypotenuse, right. So the ratios we're interested in are right now, the opposite over the hypotenuse and the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And this is something, I'm going to give you a way to remember it. The opposite over the hypotenuse is what we call, it's a ratio that's fixed forever, right? Once you, once you know theta, it's fixed. We call that the sine of theta. The adjacent, adjacent to the angle, over the hypotenuse is a ratio that's fixed forever that we call this cosine. And uh, even though the book delays this a little, I'm going to throw out that the opposite over the adjacent, that's called the tangent. I'm going to say something about vocabulary for a second. Mathematics, sometimes the vocabulary is good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's confusing. So if you remember, from geometry, we have a name for the line that touches a circle in one point. We call it the tangent. This is not the same tangent. It has nothing to do with tangents to circles. Not that I know of, anyway. Okay. So, how can we remember these ratios? You're going to use them a lot. They're going to come up a lot. Okay, one way to do it is just use pure brain power and memorize. Now, I don't know why I've been doing this for over 40 years, and I don't have to do that. It just it doesn't go away after a while, like riding a bicycle. But if you're new at it, it sometimes helps to have a mnemonic. And the mnemonic that seems to be in vogue is you remember this Native American sounding phrase Sokatoa. I don't think it means anything, but say that, say that either quietly or out loud. Sokatoa. Right? I want to show you how this mnemonic works. <coughs> so, ka, oh, ah. Here's how it works. Sign, <coughs> opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. Toa tangent opposite over adjacent. Okay? It's just a mnemonic, just to help you remember. 
take it home, say it a few times so you're doing your homework. So when you come in for an exam, you'll remember it. Okay. Uh, there's a problem with this definition of sine and cosine and tangent. It's useful to get us started. Uh, it's useful for a lot of problems that you're going to run into. Uh, for example, let's say you have some tower somewhere. You want to find out how high the tower is, but you don't want to climb it because you'll get arrested or you'll get electrocuted. So you take a position downwind, you measure the distance from the tower to where you are, and then you measure this angle. call it theta. So we know we have a right angle here. We know theta and we know our baseline, which is which which of those sides of the triangle? Adjacent. Adjacent. And what we want to know is the opposite. So we think, okay, what ratio what ratio do we know? We know the tangent theta is the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite is what I want to know, so let's solve for the opposite by multiplying by the adjacent. So the adjacent times the tangent is the opposite. Now, of course, I have to actually measure this, and this is a real world problem. So let's 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 do some real world numbers. Let's say this is everybody looks at or she got feet. Let's say the angle is 47 degrees. Alright, everybody who has a calculator isn't sure how to use it in this context. First thing you want to do whenever you're using a problem in a math class or a science class is make sure your calculator is set to the right mode. You press your mode button. You can see a list of, let's put it up here. Yeah, we, what do we have here? Normal, let's not worry about that. Float, let's not worry about that. Radian or degree. Radian or degree. <coughs> so if you want to give you want to give the sine and cosine function a degree, you have to put in degree mode. You're going to give it a radian, which you might do in this class. You're going to put it in radian mode. And as we'll see later, there are inverse functions, which you'll give it a number, like the inverse sine, and depending upon which mode it's in, it'll either give you in degrees or, or radians. But you do want to know you're in the right mode. Anybody? New with this calculator thing here? Okay. If you have your calculator and you haven't seen this before, check it out. Um, you set it by just, you know, putting the cursor on the right one and it's blinking and you hit enter. And then you get out of this by setting the second quick here. Okay, so let's uh, let's figure this out here. So we want 1,000 times the tangent of 47 degrees. So, here we are, tangent. Well, you can do it either way. Let's do it the other way. You don't even have to say times here. Well, you can say a thousand tangents of 47. You don't even have to close the parentheses. These calculators are so smart. Boom. Thousand seventy-two point three six eight seven one. The uh, calculator will give you as much accuracy as it can summon. Uh, for a real-world problem, 
In this case, we started with 1,000 feet. Let's just say that's the accuracy of it, you know, plus or minus a foot. So I only need to really put 1,000, what did say? 72. Uh, questions about this? I'm, we're, not, we're not doing all these problems yet. I just want you to realize that's what sine and cosines are really useful for, especially the right version of it, the right triangle version. Yes? Will you ever um, te, um, want the answer to be like on for the degrees of radians? Or? You might get a problem where the input is radians, and then you'll want your calculator in radians. Oh. You might. Well, yes. Okay. Yes. For instance, if this data wasn't in degrees of sine, it was 47 degrees of radian, what is in radians? Yeah, and then you, just, you can use the calculator to just make sure it's in the radian oh. mode. Yes. Uh, I think it's worth convincing. Uh, let's take 47 degrees and let's convert it to radians. So 47 degrees would be times what? We're in degrees, so we're going to go times pi divided by 180. What about those in parentheses? Mm -hmm. What about the pi and one D in parentheses? So it doesn't like unless you're doing 47 times pi over 180. Oh, sorry, I just I answered my own question. So the answer my own question. These are these are important questions if you're like involved in computer science. They're really important. You want to, this is a little computer, you want to know what it's going to do with what you give it. In this particular case, I know that if I multiply 47 by pi and then say divide, it'll be okay. If I do it the other way, if I divide by 180 and then multiply by pi, I'm not sure whether it's going to multiply by 180 divided by pi or 180 times pi. It's, the in those cases, you want to put in parentheses. Yeah, I understand. Thanks. Okay. So this is 0 0.82 something or other radians. And now let me change my mode back to radians for a minute. Well, I forget. And now if I say 1,000 tangents of, now if I want the last answer, I don't know if you know this about the calculator. There's a function called answer, which sometimes will pop up. If you just say plus, it'll pop up. But if it doesn't, you can go look at the catalog and go down to the catalog. And there's answer. You can just hit second answer. It's the minus on the bottom. Oh, you're right. Thank you. See, I, I can learn. Yeah, this, this uh, on the 80, on the 84, on the 83 also. You can do that? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, second answer, all right. Okay. And what do you know, I get the exact same number, even though in one case I'm plugging in 0 0.820 something or other, and the other I'm plugging in 47. Okay, all right. Uh, this uh, view, back up. This view of sines and cosines, as I said, <coughs> typically you get it in high school trig, and you do a lot of right triangle problems, which we'll do a few of. But it's not, it's not the kind of. Uh, oh, I have some problems here. All right, well, let's do a couple of them. Why not? Uh, Some of these are real straightforward. You don't need a calculator. Okay. Yeah, I do want to go over these. I know I, I, I talked a little bit about these special triangles, but uh, I really do want to go over these. There's a few triangles that we're going to be able to figure out the sines and cosines real easily. 
This is a what kind of red triangle? 3069, thank you. So does anyone remember the hypotenuse is 10, what the short leg must be? It's close. It's half. It's half of the hypotenuse. All right, remember this complete equilateral triangle here, right? 60, 60, 60, right? 30, 30, 60. So half of 10 is 5. Does anyone remember the more difficult to remember ratio? What's the? Five squared three. Five square root three. We just multiply the short side by the square root of three. Okay, that's the case. Our sine is now the opposite over the hypotenuse. Ten over thank you. Five root three over ten, which is I hope this isn't confusing. This is just square root three, not square root three over square root three, not square root three divided by two. So that's the sine of sixty degrees. The cosine is now the adjacent over the hypotenuse. 5 over 10 or 1 half. Okay. There are a few of these sines and cosines that it's not so much you're going to commit them to memory, it's you're going to be able to figure them out real quickly this way. Um, okay. Um, Hmm. If I were to turn this triangle this way, so this is 30 degrees. So now the sine is 5 over 10. All right, let's, let's get that in here. Sine of 30 degrees is 5 over 10. Or Can you just draw a new triangle? I think we'll make it more clear. On this side. Okay. Well, if you say so, I'll put this on the. Uh, yeah, on the projector. Okay. Let me just see what I'm doing. Three. So the sine of 30 is 1 half, and the cosine of 30, now that's the adjacent square root of 5 over 10, or the same number we had over here, square root of 3 over 2. Okay. Anyone see something curious about those two sets of numbers? The inverse. Yeah. The sine of 30 and the cosine of 60 are the same. Sine of 60 and the cosine of 30 are the same. Now, that could be just an accident, or it could be there's some relationship between 30 and 60 that causes that. Can anyone, anyone recall from geometry what we call angles that add up to 90 degrees? Complementary? Complementary? Supplementary? Supplementary? Well, it is. You're right. right. They're called complementary angles. And furthermore, you might want to notice that in every right triangle, the two leg angles opposite the legs are always complementary, right? So this means that if I know the sine and cosine of an angle, I know the sine and cosine of the complements. So since I know, let's see, let's just throw these up here. <coughs> Sine of 16, we decided was square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of 16 equals 1 half. Sine of 30 is going to be equal to 1 half. Cosine of 16 equals square 
here at 3 over 2. There's one other angle that you're going to know the sines and cosines like on the back of your palm. 45 degrees. Let me just give you these some numbers here, right? One, one. What's the third angle? Third side? Square root of two. So the sine of 45 is what? One over something, right? One over square root of two. The cosine of 45 is the same. So these are some angles you're going to know the sines and cosines of real well. Okay. Um, moving forward, there's a different view of sines and cosines that we're going to use in this class much more frequently. We'll call it the circle view. Remember we were talking about a unit circle? Centered at zero. And we have an angle starting at the x-axis and going this way. We have a point here, oh, and this is a unit circle, right? So the radius is one. This has an x and a y coordinate, right? The x coordinate is this distance here, and the y coordinate is this distance here. So if I think of the triangle way of looking at sines and cosines, y over 1 is what? That's the sine of this angle. And x, the adjacent over 1, is the cosine. So another way of looking at these, the coordinates of this point are x is cosine of theta, and y is the sine of theta. Yeah. Okay. So I've just repeated what goes on the diagram. Now, what's great about this viewpoint is that this point no longer is stuck here between 0 and 90 degrees or as we'll start to call it, 0 and pi over 2 degrees. This point can move over here. Right. I'm just going to try some technology here.
you'll notice, if you look at the sine and the cosine, they're kind of like inverse, right? The cosine is going to zero up here, sine is going down to one down here. But we can take that, oh, <laughs> the technology didn't work. It's supposed to move over here. Okay, well, I think, uh, oh, I'm not going to go back. It's not working because it's... It's not working because the geometer sketchpad is not as smart as we are. I wanted it like to continue showing you these values over here, but it's not. We'll go back to the dot cam. Okay, so uh, so here's an example where um, we have an angle that's greater than 90 degrees, but we still have a cosine and sine because we have two coordinates x and y on the circle. Did that say zero is greater than zero? I'm sorry? Did that say zero? Oh, it's okay, never mind. Zero is greater than zero. Oh, up here? Yeah. That, that refers to this diagram. Oh, okay. Right? We're, 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 we're going beyond that now. We can, we're not stuck. <coughs> Remember, we've seen angles that go for <coughs> 90 degrees around the circle. We've seen angles that go around, you know, three or four times. All right, well, let's, let's take a look at this. We can still, just as we did before, we can drop an altitude, and we have kind of an adjacent and an opposite and a hypotenuse, right, as before. But something different has happened here. Think about x and y, all right? Ooh, somebody's ahead of the game here. What's going to be negative? The cosine is going to be negative here, right? We're on this side of the x-axis, so x is negative. Y is still positive, right? So all of a sudden, we have a cosine that's <coughs> less than zero. I, I just want you to think about that. In this view, the old view, that makes no sense. How could, how could a, an adjacent over a hypotenuse two positive numbers ever be negative, right? But our cosine function, we're going to see that's perfectly okay to have a negative cosine. We can go a little further than that, right? Do you have worksheets? Did you have worksheets? Did I work? Actually, this isn't a worksheet. These are my notes, and they're available online if you want to look at them. Okay. Here we have an angle that goes all the way around. And so what do we know about the sine and cosine? They're both negative. And then finally, finally we have an angle that's now in the fourth quadrant. Quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three. This is in the fourth quadrant. So our cosine is positive and our sine is negative. Okay, is anybody confused right now? Admit to it. Somebody's dead. I'll try and confuse you now. Okay. Race Sokotoa here. I want you to think about the first day of class, and I was showing you a periodic function. Anyone remember this? It was on the oscilloscope, and it looked like this. Remember what we called this? Sine curve, right? So think about some points on this. This is zero. This is, I don't know, 
pi over 2 or 90 degrees for those of you still want to hold on to degrees a little while. This will be pi 180. This will be 3 pi over 2. This is our sine curve. What does it do? It starts at 0, goes to 1, and goes back to 0 again. Then it goes negative, right? It goes down here to negative 1, right? positive 1. And then it goes back to 0. Right? Think of that when you think about this circle. The sine is what? It's this distance from the x-axis, right? It goes up, gets to 1, goes back down to 0, then it goes negative, down to negative 1, and then back up to 0. talk about this with respect to coterminal angles, right? So we know that an angle can have any value. It's not limited between 0 and 360 degrees or 0 and 2 pi radians, right? An angle could go around a few times, right? It could even go negative, right? No matter how you get there, though, if you have a coterminal angle, right? One angle, you know, gets there by going around this way a few times, one comes this way. <coughs> what do we know about this point? It's the same, it's the same point, which means that which means that the sine and cosine will be the same. So the pearl of wisdom here is, if two angles are coterminal, what do we know about their sines and cosines? They're the same, right? Now, I'd like to erase something right after I drew it. But, Let's extend this a little because there'll be some nice reason to do that. Right? 
I'd say I, I picked some point on here, some angle. This is kind of the theta the axis. You know, it's x. So let me draw a horizontal line here. And let's pick out the coterminal angles. Well, this one clearly is coterminal, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This one is coterminal. Uh, I extend this backwards. No, I, it's not going to fit on the blackboard. But there's a coterminal point back here. Now, you might you might say, well, wait a minute, this. This goes to this point too, right? It's the same value. The sign is the same value at this point. We're gonna we're gonna look at that in a second. However, if I drew a cosine curve on here and I looked at you know the cosine at this point, it would not match over here. It's a, it's a different angle, right? This is uh, what is the period of this? Right here. Two pi or it's around, yes, yeah, just one circle, right? Okay. This is a lot. I want everybody to take a deep breath. All right, let's uh, let's look at some other angles we need to know. Uh, let's start with a real easy one. Let's start with zero. Right? I just don't go anywhere. Right? What's this point here? What coordinate is it? Zero, couple one. One zero. So the sign of zero. Zero. Cosine of zero is one. Yeah. One. We've got we got four nice points here. Here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. This one of course is zero one. This one is now negative one zero. And this is Zero, negative one. This is pi over two or ninety degrees. This is one hundred and eighty degrees. Two seventy degrees, and if you come back to three sixty, it's zero again, right? Right. 
if this is new to you, you're going to want to review this. So uh, this is going to be uh, fundamental to the rest of the class. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a break for five minutes here, so just, you know, relax, talk for a second. We'll, we have a little bit more to do. Um, one, while I'm taking a rest here, I'm going to pass out the worksheet and take a look at it. start to read this and you say, I haven't said what a reference angle is, that's correct. That's what we're going to do in a couple minutes. This is just a sheet I'm handing out. We'll pro this will probably, I'll probably let you take this home and bring it in. So this one we don't have. Uh, probably Tuesday. Yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna work on it. Well, what, 
about the x and y coordinate here? Right, let's, let's just for the sake of argument, we'll call this x and y. What's happened to the coordinate here? Y has gotten negative, it's negative y, but x hasn't changed. Right? Now, over here, I can't like, I'm, I'm going to draw an angle where this is theta, so this angle is actually what? This is 180 degrees minus theta. Now I have the same situation, except now what has happened? X is negative. One more time. Okay, now I'm going to come all the way around here to 180. Now I'm looking at the angle. Uh, this is getting messy. 180 plus theta. And now I've got negative x and negative y. The point of this is when I'm in one of these other three quadrants, there's some equivalent angle here. In other words, it's got the same triangle. And the only difference, the only difference is the sine of the cosine and sine. Ooh, be careful when I say that. The sine, I mean the positive negative sine of the cosine function and the sine function. That's another <coughs> confusing mathematical terminology, right? There's sine function, and there's sine of the number. Okay, I'm trying to keep those clear. Well, let's see how that could be useful. Oh, for those who want the, we got to get the vocabulary word in. This angle, the equivalent angle to these, not equivalent, but useful, this is called one here. This is called the, the reference angle. That's the angle that we can use to find the sine and cosine of these other angles in the first quadrant. Yes? So then if, if, if that angle were to be like 60 degrees, and in the second quadrant, 150 degrees, this reference angle would be 60. Just, you're, you're half a step ahead of me. Alright? Yes. Yes. Alright. So let's say we pick some angle over here in the second quadrant. Alright, let's pick 110. And let's say we have a, you know, for sake of argument, we have a dumb calculator and it doesn't know how to find any angle unless it's between 0 and 90. It doesn't know how to find the, func the sine and cosine function. What do we do here, right? We find the reference angle, right? What's the reference angle? <laughs> 70. How did you get 70? It's 20 degrees from the y axis. So you're saying 20. It is. And you may have. I don't understand your process. Do you want to explain why? 20 off that is the right number. What does 20 have to do with 110? Because we didn't find it in the first quadrant. I mean, you're right. 
don't get me wrong, you're right, I just don't understand. Because if you're working from zero to 90 degrees, then you just convert it. Because it has to be in the first quadrant, right? So, mm -hmm. 110 in the second quadrant, 110 minus 90 is 20. So you're just going to. Oh, okay, 110. Let me just be something to do 180 minus. So 110 minus 90 yeah. is 20. Okay, and that's this, this angle. So therefore, it's 70. Okay, thank you. That was good. No. Okay. If, if you understood that, don't pay any attention to what I'm going to say next. If you didn't understand that, okay, this is 110. What's its supplement? 70. This angle is 70, the reference angle is going to be 70. I, I, I got to the same place as you. If it, what you did makes sense to you, use that. Right. Let's, try, let's try this again in the third quadrant. See how this is third quadrant. Right. Have some angle down here. So, let's say 200, 200 degrees. Okay, so so again, how am I going to get from this angle to this reference angle. It's like pi is a straight line, right? So from here to here is pi, and then we have this angle, and that's the reference angle. So it's going to be 200 minus, let's get our units right. I don't know what 200 is in, in radians, so let's just say 200 minus 180 is 20 degrees. Okay, um, you can do the same thing again. What happens when you go into the fourth quadrant? Right? So in the second quadrant, we get the supplement of the angle. In the third quadrant, we subtract 180. What happens in the fourth quadrant? Mm -hmm. so now I have an angle all the way over here. Okay, so what angle do you want? Well, it's this angle. pi minus the angle, or 360 minus the angle. <coughs> so this is 20 degrees. 360 minus 200 is 160 degrees. Wait, 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 wait. 360 minus, okay. oh, well, it's not 200. <laughs> what, what yeah, is that's the third quadrant angle. Let's say, let's say this angle is now 300 degrees, right? That would be a fourth okay. quadrant angle. So 360 minus 300 is so that would be like, say, 60 degrees. Okay, now, what are we doing with this? Well, let's take this 110 degree angle here, right? I want to find the sine of 110 degrees. Well, that's going to be the same as the sine of its reference angle, which is 20 degrees. But now we have to look carefully. Did the, did the SIGN sign switch? No, signs are all positive above here, so this is correct. What about the cosine of 110 degrees? Well, that's going to be the cosine of 110 degrees. However, co 
cosine went from positive to negative. So, so if I plug in 20 into my calculator, I'll get a positive number, but I just know change the sign to negative. I'm going to circle this for emphasis. Reference angle. This first quadrant angle is the reference angle we can use to know all the sines and cosines of all these other angles. Okay, let's, let's try it with that third uh, quadrant here. So this is the second quadrant, third quadrant. So, okay, sine of 200 degrees. What did we decide that's going to be the sine of how many degrees? 20. 20 degrees. And cosine 200 degrees is also. All right, but wait a minute. What about the SIGN signs? They're both negative. idea here? We really only need a calculator that goes signs from 0 to 90 degrees. Your calculator is probably not limited by that. Just check. Exactly. Yes, that's right. So let me just switch this over to degree mode. Um, I have a bit of correction. Okay, hold your correction for just a second. We're just going to plug in sine of 200. So let's first uh, let's first plug in sine of 20. And now we're going to plug in sine of 200. Does that look right? Same number, only the negative. Yes? Uh, sine of 110 is not equal to sine of 20. It equals to 160. Oh. I'm using the wrong number for 110. What did, uh, what did we decide it was? So I, the, the minus 90 thing doesn't work. It has to be, oh, yeah, you have to use the supplementary. In this case, in the first quadrant, it's the supplement, right? Not the supplement. Yeah, it's the supplement. In the second, you have to subtract pi or 180. And in the third, third, I mean the fourth, what are we doing the fourth? Well, we subtract. We subtract this number from 360. of our triangle is not one, things don't change very much. 
right? The hypotenuse is R, and our coordinates are just R times the cosine of theta and R times the sine of theta. Cosines are positive, positive, negative, 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 positive, and positive, negative. And then if it's one of these well-known angles, you're going to draw a triangle somewhere here. So let's say we have a 135-degree angle here, which means this angle here is 45 degrees. So this is 1. This is going to be 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2. And we can just look right at it and see, OK, the sine is going to be square root of 2 over 1. The cosine is going to be a negative square root of 2 over 1. Similarly, with a 30 degree or a 60 degree triangle, you know the ratios for those triangles. Okay, this is a lot, and uh, what I'm going to do, I handed out a sheet. Uh, you can do this for homework. Let's bring it in on Tuesday and we'll, we'll ask questions about it. Um, there's a great unit circle on the inside of the first page of the book. There's a, thank you, there's a great unit circle on the inside of the first page of the book. I guess I have a, I don't think I have the first page of the book, unfortunately. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is this the circle you're talking about? Yeah, it's going to correspond to the same way you said. Yeah. Matthew, you said that's available to find your notes, but they're available on the website. I'm sorry. My notes are available on the website. The notes I use are available on the website. 